Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to discuss about ultrasound for common uterine pathologies, and I am Professor Dr. Sayyid Amir Gilani. When we talk about endometrium, it depends either the endometrium is to be assessed in a normal cycle, a menstrual cycle, or it is postmenopausal. When it is in the menstrual cycle, it again depends. Either it is in the proliferative phase, in early proliferative phase, or late proliferative phase, or secretory phase. In postmenopausal women, we know that there will be a thin echogenic line due to atrophy. The thickness of the endometrium decreases, so there will be atrophy of the endometrium. Therefore, myometrium may be seen as a subendometrial hypoacric hollow and the endometrial thickness is very important. Another important thing when we talk about the endometrial diseases is endometrial hyperplasia. Non-specific thickening of the endometrial lining can be caused by estrogen overstimulation, common cause of uterine bleeding. So when we get especially a woman with uh, uterine bleeding, we have to keep in mind that the patient may have over stimulation by the estrogen or the patient can have postmenopausal uh, bleeding due to tamoxifen therapy or due to estrogen overstimulations due to some medication. In tamoxifen therapy, we can have irregular thickening of endometrium with cystic changes. It appears like this, we will have endometrium, this is whole of the endometrium. Endometrium is having hyperplasia with cystic areas in it. So this was a patient with tamoxifen therapy. Uh, when we use transvaginal ultrasound with color Doppler, we can assess the endometrium and its vessels. Here you can see the color signals at the periphery of the endometrium. The resistive index is around 0.48. We usually take normal when it is above 0.50. So in this case, it was relatively lower. Another important mm, disease of the endometrium is endometrial polyps, hyperplastic or adenomatous endometrial tissues. On ultrasound, we get discrete mass within endometrial cavity. Some endometrial cancers and polypoids and some mucosal are pedunculated. Here we can see the endometrial cavity with some fluid inside and this is one polyp lying here near to the fundus. So when we get the endometrial polyp, we can use color Doppler. This is a spectral Doppler along with the polyp. The moderate vascular resistance is about 0 0.48 plus minus 0 0.06. But we can have infection or necrosis which would influence the blood flow and here is 0 0.56 which is a bit higher resistive index in this case because of the polyp. This is another case of the endometrial polyp. Within the endometrium there is a polyp and we, when we put on colors we will get a feeding vessel, usually a single feeding vessel which is supplying the polyp and then we assess the resistive index of that polyp to assess either it is changing into a malignant polypoid mass or it is just a benign polyp. A few more cases of the polyps here you can see this is the endometrium and here we have a polyp and this is another polyp in the endometrium having some small cystic changes and this is again a polyp. We can use 3D to assess uh, these pathologies, here is a polyp insight on 3D and here is again a 3D for the endometrial polyp around its structure, a single polyp there. Another endometrial disease is the endometrial carcinoma. 
usually found in post menopausal women which are above 50 years of age increased risk associated with an unopposed estrogen stimulation and it is linked with obesity diabetes mellitus hypertension nulliparity late menopause polycystic ovaries or we can have it due to deficiency of the or disturbed hormones the endometrial carcinoma it will be a hyperechoic structure or inhomogeneous endometrium is seen it can be irregular the outline is disturbed because of the invasion of the, the carcinoma into the walls there will be disruption in the endometrial subendometrial layers here is endometrial carcinoma a malignant mass multiple feeding vessels that are low resistant and usually they range about 0.4 about 0.45 usually less than 0.5 this is a case of endometrial carcinoma excessive feeding vessels and you can see the resistive index is very low 0.37 so anything which is appears irregular in the endometrium on color doppler giving multiple vessels engorged vessels on spectral doppler the resistive index is less than 0.5 is indicative of a carcinoma a malignancy originating from the endometrium here is the intratumoral blood flow in the endometrium we can see this is a mass having cystic areas inside there is a feeding vessel and resistive index is 0.300 which is indicative of a malignant mass. Another case of the endometrial carcinoma on grayscale and then we have the power doppler. Then comes the endometrial disease which is called Escherman's syndrome. Normal endometrial linings replaced by fibrous adhesions. Usually secondary to previous DNC or multiple abortions or infections. Sonographically varying appearance we can have normal endometrium, thin endometrium or thick endometrium so it varies. How we diagnose the Escherman's uh, syndrome is important. There will be hyperacuic band like structures, the fibrous structures inside. Here it is with 3D. You can see the hyperacuic intrauterine fibrous structures, which are the adhesions. So, common ultrasound findings and differential diagnosis of the thickened endometrium includes endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial polyps, carcinoma. Escherman syndrome and re retained products which are the retained pieces of conception which are also abbreviated as RPOCs. In thick endometrium it can be due to hormonal imbalances like pituitary or ov ovarian abnormalities. It can be due to postmenopausal endometrium and Escherman syndrome. So these are three main uh, differential diagnosis for thin endometrium. For intrauterine fluid collections, the causes are congenital obstruction like imperforate hymen, vaginal septum or atresia, required obstruction like uterine malignancy, radiotherapy, scarring or foreign bodies. Postmenopausal patient, if it is a benign process, we can find cervical stenosis and if it is malignant we can find endometrial or cervical malignancies. This is a case of intracavitary fluid collection endometrial carcinoma. You can see the outline of the endometrium there is a mass inside intracavitary or endometrial carcinoma. Uh, these are few nodules of that carcinoma 
and we have got some fluid inside along with that the that lobes of mass another important thing is the vascularized septum in the uterus which is going up to the endometrium and if there is vascularity we can assess the vascularity in this case it will always be above 0.5 as it is septa it is a benign structure so the resistive index will be above 0.5 this is another case in which the color and pulse wave doppler studies were done for the uh, septum in the endometrium the vascularization of the septum indicated that the resistive index of 0.68 the normal normal range for a vascularization of septum if we consider the resistive index the normal range is 0.68 to 1 and the vascularity of the septum is seen in 71.22 percent this is the 3d of the uh, septate uterus here you can see the septa inside so the vascularity will be here this is the complete septa showing two endometriums a unicornate uterus in which we can see the endometrium here this is the uterus having single coronet single endometrium then we come to the leomyomas the most common benign gynecological tumors with increase incidence in women who are around or above 35 years it is a circumscribed spherical mass arising from the smooth muscles of the myometrium they are not capsulated but develops a false capsule or compressed myometrial tissues the leomyomas which are commonly called fibroids atrophy and vascular changes cause the fibroid to undergo degeneration which can cause fibrotic changes hemorrhage necrosis and calcification respond to estrogen may enlarge rapidly in pregnancy and may shrink during menopause the leomyomas can be seen at different locations we can find them at broad ligament they stimulate adnexal mass as we can have cervical myomas we can have intramural which are most common and we can have submucosal uh, cause the most symptoms pedunculated and extend out of the cervix and the last type is subserosal fibroids on ultrasound we will have large range of appearance the classic appearance is a fibroid or leomyoma on ultrasound will be homogeneous hypoechoic discrete mass with poor sound through transmission and dropout multiple fibroids can appear with a large inhomogeneous nodulated uterus with lobulated contours upon degeneration they can calcify become more cystic or undergo fatty degeneration this is a fibroid which is submucosal fibroid is the endometrial cavity outside of the endometrial cavity this side of the endometrial line is distorted and we have a large submucosal fibroid a fibroid with cystic degenerative changes here and calcifications in a submucosal leomyoma a fibroid having calcifications this is 
the endometrium and we have got a myoma a fibroid here with the spiral vessels so regularly separated peripheral vessels are there which can demarcate the outline of the myoma in this case you can see the range is 0 0.54 plus minus 0 0.08 and in this case, we, ha we had resistive index of 0 0.538. On B mode, a case of submucosal myoma, a fibroid which is submucosal in appearance, then putting some colors and getting the spectrum. This is another case on grayscale and the appearance on color Doppler shows that it is sarcoma and malignancy. Uh, a fibroid which changed into a leomyosarcoma. Uncommon, rapidly growing, aggressive malignancy arising from pre existing leomyomas. Then is a condition which is called adenomyosis, ingrowing of the endometrium into the myometrium. So the endometrial tissues, they grow into the myometrium. It affects about 20% of women, mainly multiparous women. The symptoms are bleeding, pain, and infertility, especially the lady will have increased pain during menstruation as the endometrial tissues which are implanted in the myometrium, in the muscles of the uterus will also bleed. So they will appear cystic like this. If we scan after the menstrual days, we will not find these cystic areas in most of the cases. So findings will be in large uterus without fibroids and during the menstrual cycle, if it is scanned, then there will be cystic areas means bleeding from the uh, endometrial tissues which are implanted in the myometrium. So there will be disturbed echogenicity of the middle myometrial layer, hypoechoic myometrium and multiple small cysts in the myometrium due to bleeding or coagulation. On color Doppler there will be increased vascularity characterized with moderate vascular resistance within myometrium the resistive index ranges from 0 0.56 plus minus 0.12. Here are the adenomyoses on grayscale cystic areas and color flow. Then comes the molar pregnancy. In molar pregnancy, uh, there will be snowstorm appearance on grayscale. This is with the color Doppler appearance the mole is compressing the vessels so increasing their velocity and resistive index here you can see the resistive index is 0 0.400 this is another case of the snowstorm appearance which is the more molar pregnancy then comes the pelvic inflammatory diseases, which is also called PID. Acute PID may occur following surgery, but usually is a result of ascending infection and associated with intrauterine contraceptive devices. The chronic PID can involve adhesions, edema, hydrosalpinks, pyosalpinks, and ovarian pathologies. This is a case of hydrosalpix within the tube. There is fluid inside. Acute PID. This is in the tube. Here is more fluid inside. And we can see the resistive index and measured at the endometrium is 0 0.34. This is a case of chronic PID excessive fluid seen in the pouch of Douglas. These were the most important pathologies of the endometrium which are seen along with the myometrial pathologies and pelvic inflammatory diseases. 
थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच